Professor Eva Haller is a philanthropist and one of the world's leading human rights activists. In conversation with broadcaster and GCU honorary graduate Dr Sally Magnuson, Professor Haller spoke at the Magnuson Fellowship Lecture, where she touched on her childhood, her escape from Nazi-occupied Hungary and her various philanthropic projects. In 1942, Professor Haller was 12 years old when she and her elder brother John joined the Hungarian resistance. She began the lecture by speaking about their upbringing and the influence John had on her life. It was my brother who was seven years older than I who was printing up uh, leaflets, anti-Nazi leaflets, and then delivering them and distributing them. And at first when I asked him if I may come along, of course the answer was no because he felt my parents would kill him. Well, first of all, my parents didn't even know that he was doing it, let alone uh, my, my coming along. But I did meddle along and uh, started going with him and seeing the heroism of that young man who then, as my life has gone on and even today, I would think that my brother John has been my guiding light to do whatever I could because he was killed very soon thereafter and never was able to fulfill that which he would have done had he been alive to do so. He escaped with four other men from forced labor. We were trying to get over to the Yugoslav border to join Tito and his forces fighting against Hitler. And they spent one night in a little hut which had a front door and a back door and they heard the dogs and the soldiers coming in the shooting and my brother turned to his four friends and said, run, I cover. And they ran in the back and they all survived and my brother was killed. And all his acts that I can remember had a sense of nobility, a sense of selflessness a self of caring. So he sort of left me that. There wasn't anything else that we have left of him. And so I sort of owe it to him to do the things that I think he would have done. When German forces occupied Budapest, she was forced into hiding and was taken into an orphanage by the Dumfries-born Church of Scotland missionary Jane Haining. Jane later died in Auschwitz for helping Jewish children. Without Jane, I would be here. Uh, Scotland saved my life. And I never really had the opportunity to say thank you. Jane was a heroic woman who came to Hungary and was called back by the mission. And she refused to go back. She said in her letter that she needs to be in Budapest at the institute with her Jewish children. Uh, they, shortly thereafter, she was taken to Auschwitz and killed in the gas chamber. At the time, she really was not planning to be a missionary and she was not planning to save lives. And in one of her letters, you can read about the fact that she suddenly found her calling. This is what she needs to do. And so she went to Budapest, and uh, the school was actually for, originally for middle and upper class kids, boarding school, which slowly as the war went on and there was need for protecting us kids, became a place of protection. And the reason, even though we were rounded up to be uh, exterminated, uh, it happened because we were there in, in the Institute. It gave us an extra two, three months of life because very soon after the roundup, the Russians occupied Hungary. So that those, those extra weeks made it possible for me then to go into hiding and survive. So I, I owe you guys my life. Professor Haller went on to emigrate to the United States and in 1965 she and her late husband established a marketing company. In less than three years it had made more than one million dollars. It was from there where her philanthropic work began. 
uh, we uh, approached the UNICEF and we had a lot of equipment that we used for that period, projectors and tape machines. And we were able to do a lot of teaching and a lot of bringing kids together in, in the jungles, in the woods, and, and do a lot of uh, inspiring them to want to know about the world that was beyond them in, in geography. So that's what we did for a while. And then our money ran out, as money sometimes does. So uh, Reader's Digest called us at a very opportune moment, suggesting that could we please come back because they needed a school campaign uh, for children's books or Reader's Digest books. So we came back to start our business again. But by then it was clear that we set down the pattern of our life that we will always be working with children, that we are very interested in the power of youth, of sharing with youth our belief that they have the power to change the world. And that started us on the road where we are still. Professor Haller explained she wanted to help disadvantaged communities across the world. It was because, you know, my brother John was always in the back of my head all my life. And we were so fortunate. We made the money. And there was so much to do. And we learned so much during those years about hunger, about need, about our ability, you know, when we traveled through Southeast Asia, about the, the, the difference that we were able to make with so little. That there was no question that that's what, you know, that if we made money again, we'll again find a way to spend it and, and do it that way. And, uh, you know, you learn on the way as you go. And, and we learned that building schools is good, but what if there is no clean water? And building schools is great, but if the kids come to school hungry, they can't learn. And building school is great, but if you don't, afford and support a community around them, where the mothers don't have an income so that they can work and, and buy those school books or just create life. Or if you want people to eat the idea that you really want to create agriculture so that people become self-sustaining. So as, as years passed, it became clearer and clearer that that building schools or working with children, none of these things alone answered the need that we have to create an environment. At the end of her lecture, Professor Haller paid tribute to the work in the community carried out by Glasgow Caledonian University. It, it is a, a magical world because you keep on meeting people who who do so much more and achieve so much and care so much about their world. And then I come here and I get to see Glasgow Caledonian University. And I feel I'm the luckiest person I ever met because this is such a privilege to be here. And I feel I'm learning each day so much from all of you and the Caledonian Club and every aspect the Grameen Bank, the nursing school, everything you do here, that, and I'm sure most of you are involved with the university who are in the audience. I cannot tell you what privilege and pleasure and joy it is for us to be part of you. And, and I really thank you for that.